A first of its kind venture capital firm is fighting a lawsuit over its efforts to help level the playing field for the founders of startups. According to the Fearless Fund, just 0.39% of VC funding goes to businesses led by women of color. So they started a grant contest to change that. But now they're facing major pushback. They are being sued by a group arguing that the contest is a civil rights violation because it's only open to black women. Fearless Fund co-founder and CEO Arian Simon is here right now. What's up? How you doing? I'm wonderful. How are Simone, you? Simone, excuse me. Um, it's good to see you. You've been good? I've been, overall, yes, I've been good. Good, good. I'm um, good to have you. Let's jump right in. So you, you, you faced uh, tough questions from the judges Wednesday. Um, what was your biggest takeaway? <clears throat> My biggest takeaway, the opposing counsel compared our program to the whites only sign during segregation. Mm. And afterwards, reporters said, how did that make you feel? And I explained that the whites only sign during segregation, one, was used to oppress people, but it was not solving a disparity. The work that we do is actually solving a disparity. We are looking to level the playing field. We're trying to make things equitable and equal, and that's why we do the work we do. But I do believe in the same thing that Edward Bloom does. He's on the plaintiff side. And people are like, what's that? And I'm like, I want a world where race doesn't matter, too. He says that's what he wants. I want that, too. We're just not there yet. Hmm. Now, a point was raised, and you bring up the whites only sign, um, mm -hmm. and that's usually coming from those that are critical of affirmative action. Um, in, in this, you say that it should be protected by free speech, this contest. And those might argue, well, if you're not a black woman, then it should not be covered by the First Amendment. What do you say to that? Well, the First Amendment does allow us to express our dollars however we choose. And this is also a charitable organization. Never has a charitable organization been prohibited from where they're allowed to donate. Mm. And, and they're using, this is the Reconstruction Era Section 1981 of the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Which was actually a law that was put in place for non-whites to enter contracts. Correct. And this is the same law that they're using or, print, or, or foundation for their argument, Alliance. Um, your attorney, again, said that this was unprecedented, that this was an effort to use that section to force a charity to reverse its message or shut down. Where are you all at right now in terms of funding and your organization? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that. We have been financially impacted by this litigation. We have missed out on probably anywhere upwards of eight figures mm. in potential investments that were coming through prior to the litigation. Um, we do not have the same amount of corporate partners that we had prior to litigation on the foundation side as well. So right now, we are looking for anybody that does believe in DEI and believes in funding programs like this. We're looking for corporations to step up. So th this is part of a bigger and quite simple, actually, conversation going on in this country, right? We all agree, everyone recognizes the disparities in wealth and Most access uh, mm -hmm. in America. We were just talking about it yesterday, right? So the question is, how do you address those disparities? It sounds like you and Ever Bloom want the same end goal, which is no one's considering race. The question is, how do you get how to that? How do you that? get there? How do you get there, right? What do you say to people who believe the way to get there is not more discrimination, right? The way to end discrimination is to stop discriminating in all cases, including one like this. The issue is that when you take away race-conscious programs, race does get left behind, mm. and that is the issue. Studies have proven that any time there are emphasis in programs focused on things that are race-conscious, that disparities are being solved for. But when you remove it, that the numbers shift. Are you thinking... Mean... Oh, go ahead, Tony, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I was gonna say, are you thinking about a workaround at this point? Um, because let's just say you had $20 million. It's your money. You can give it to whomever you want to. Are we thinking about a workaround? At this point, we, of course, are still definitely defending our stance. Mm. Um, are there other ways for us to continue to do work? That is correct. But what we do not want to take place is for it to be illegal for us to do what it is that we do, which is why we have to maintain our stance. It's a big test case. That's yeah. why it matters yes. nationally. It's a big test case. But so then, I mean, you're, what you're saying is you imagine a future that you are pushing towards with this program where your program would not actually be necessary because everybody would just get what they deserve based on their talent. 
one more time. You say you and Ever Bloom are going mm-hmm. for the same end goal, right? Correct. Right, which is a place where race does not have does not factor into people's mm-hmm. level of wealth, level of success, level of access. How long do you think it will take till we get to that place? Are we happy Oof. there? It will take trillions of dollars to move the needles in these statistics. Women of color represent over 20% of the U.S. population while receiving a fraction of percent of funding. It's going to take trillions of dollars to get to a place where we are equitable and equal. Mm. But if we can get there, I'm here for it. Yeah. It's super interesting. Yeah, we're just trying to run the race, and there's such a far lead, which yeah, that yeah. is what we are trying to address, that disparity. Um, you know, do you, if this does go to the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. do you have what it takes to take this fight that far? We don't have a choice. Mm. <laughs> we don't have a choice. If it goes to the Supreme Court, we will have to defend our stance. We won't have a choice. Mm. Aaron Simone, thank you so much. We'll I appreciate it. you. Thank you. High stakes. Thank, thank you very you. much.